What is going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Pot Scum. This right here, as you all know by now, is the podcast where we dive into the deep, dark, murky waters with a plethora of legendary guests. I am, of course, your host, your bastard of ceremonies, the number one scumbag Rex Ruger. That's R E Triple X. You might also know me as AKA the King of Sleaze, AKA the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, AKA Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. That's right. You're looking at him, the one and only son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams. I got a million fans. I'm your ice cream man, Mr. Wap Baba Loo Baba Wap Bam Bam Shazam. Hot damn. Looking good, of course. Everybody in the house, including my beautiful audience, for me, that's made possible by, get it, learn it, love it. And you too might be able to get the quaff like raw. Coming to you as always from the lavender lounge of love. Look at this place. This is where it all goes down, folks. And joined as always by the Keith Hernandez puppet, the one and only, the icon himself, number 17 in your programs, number one in your hearts. This is, of course, the No Frills podcast. You know me as Mr. Lo-Fi, No Frills. Don't know how to work the technology all that good, but I can give you thrills, and that's looking at this mug. So you're welcome, everybody. And I just realized, speaking of looking at, that I get quite a glare off of Pop's poster back here. So I'm looking into some alternatives where we can darken him up or change the lighting a little bit. He's just not getting the recognition over my shoulder. I mean, but he is there, folks, looking down and looking down proudly, I might add, because. I am, of course, in Love Sword, my glam metal sleaze passion project, and I'm still looking for players. No one seems to have the fucking stones, but if you do and you want to play with the best and be the backing band behind the man, the second greatest front man, with all due respect to Pops, of course, to ever do this thing. One of the greats. And speaking of one of the greats, Tonight, right here on our little podcast, we've got another one of the greats, one of the hardcore greats. And of course, hardcore music always, always gets the blood pumping. I mean, there's nothing better, folks, nothing better than getting the chance to talk with a real, true, bona fide hardcore legend on top of it all. So with that being said, of course, this is another reason why it's the No Frills Podcast. No editing, no slick tricks. This ain't the motley crew of podcasting. You get to see it all, warts and all. So. And that is why, of course. So while we wait for our... uh, our guest to get in here, I would, of course, like to add on the little caveat that uh, Pod Scum, check us out on Facebook for all updates on uh, new episodes that have been released and just whatever shit I feel like throwing up there. You can follow us there on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching, of course, please like and subscribe. Uh, at the time of this video, we are up over 260 subscribers in a mere nine months, give or take. So it's going swimmingly well. That is because of not only my audience, but because of the awesome, awesome guests that come on here and chop it up with me. Uh, How could it get any better? Uh, But of course, obviously, I can't do what I do without them. So big thank you to them. Um, What else? What else? What else has been going on? Uh, As you guys know and uh, may have seen on past episodes, uh, the saga, the crushing saga of me losing uh, a half a dozen episodes, uh, which thankfully, thankfully, all of those guests, uh, I have re-reached out to them and they are of course uh, uh, willing and receptive uh, to doing the podcast again. So I thank them for that. Anyway, my guest is here right now. So let's get down to it and chop it up. Let's do it.
Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Awesome. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you on here, Paul Bearer. I just consider you in the hardcore world a fucking legend. I was just doing my little preamble beforehand, uh, before you got in here, man, uh, uh, touting you as such. Uh, a fucking bona fide legend, man. You know what? Because it's hard for people to come on here and want to toot their own fucking horn. So I'm always more than happy to do the tooting for them. You know what I mean? It's important. Um, That's funny. That's but, great. but you know, I, what, I got so much stuff I want to ask you about. But kind of, let me kind of start in backpedal, though. Hardcore in general, you know, as somebody that's been, you know, involved in that scene for so long, you know, does that whole hardcore uh, – sense of morals and the ethos of all of it you know does that is, is that still exist today and can it still exist today or you know is that really a snapshot in time you know uh from what you guys were doing back then oh that's a good one uh it can exist today if people wanted to if they would allow it to if they would actually give a fuck half the time and which is hard sometimes especially in this in this yeah. day and age uh, especially i mean I mean, a lot of us, you know, I mean, especially back in the day, you know, a lot of us, we were kids. Yeah. I mean, we may have been idle, idealistic, uh, definitely a little naive, but um, we were also scared to death of a lot yeah. of things. I mean, if it wasn't like we were scared to death of our peers, and that's why we found punk rock and hardcore, or scared to death of our, our parents or whatever was going on in our neighborhoods and our schools, we were scared to death to die in a nuclear war. Yeah. I mean, that was a big thing. Yeah. You know? And, you know, especially then you, you you get into all this stuff and you start listening to some of these bands, like that first crash and discharge records, they scared the shit out of you when yeah. you're like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so the covers or the pictures, you're like, oh, my God. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Hey. And, you know, it's funny you bring that up, you know, because I recently uh, uh, had the privilege of uh, getting the chance to talk to Craig from Agnostic Front, and, and he shared a story about, you know, one of his first shows and being scared to death, too. I kind of remember that. That, that really made it, uh, made it resonate with me. The first hardcore show I was going to go to was in Syracuse, yeah. and, and I had been like a uh, metal kid, but the first one I was going to go to was the Crow Mags, which, long story short, they had ended up breaking up shortly before that, so it was very anticlimactic. But I remember going there with a real sense of danger, hearing how off the chains those fucking shows could yeah. get. Sure. No, I mean, you know, first couple of shows I went to, I don't know what the hell I was getting into. You know, I mean, I was hoping. I mean, it's not like, like there was videos out that you could right. watch. There was no YouTube or nothing like that. You had your records. You had your blurry pictures and fanzines or whatever magazines or whatever you found on art record covers. And, yeah, there was, there was definitely a sense, uh, an element of danger because there were a lot of places they played. It was dark. They were dingy. They were dirty. Yeah. Well, the piss and, and, and reefer. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there were a lot of older people there. But, you know, they they – I'll leave it out there. Well, I mean, I'm sure they were, they were, they were I mean, they weren't predatory. I'm sure there might have been a few. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Not yeah. that everyone was innocent by no means. But a lot of them were kind of glad to see, like, it was the torch being passed. Right. And so, like, that it was, that it would keep going. And like I said, we were kids. We were, and we were trying to figure out ourselves and, and figure out what's going on in this world. And then, like, when you, uh, you know, some of us read some books. Most of us read lyrics. <laughs> that, that was yep. our learning, you know. Yep. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know about uh, as much as Canada if it wasn't for DOA and SCTV. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, just, and, and 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 with England, it was like you know the, the English records and the punk records and the, the Oi records and the, and, and um, Monty Python, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that, and that's how you you had your history and what you knew. But you would take that and work with it. And, you know, then you had your political bands here, whatnot, in the States or whatever. You had the Dead Kennedys, of course. And, you know, that one of the first bands I saw back in the day. And, I mean, yeah, he talked a lot. But, like, you know, if, if, you, if you actually listen to somebody, a lot of it made sense. Yeah. A little you know, long in the tooth. But, you know, <laughs> it was, you know, it, it, it got scary. But, you know, if you listen to it, and then we, we went and we, we tried to work with that. You know, a lot of us tried to sound more intelligent than we were, of course. <laughs> there was a lot of that going on. Yeah, yeah. There's, still, there's still a lot of that going on <laughs> in the world. <laughs> going on. People use certain terms. I just hear people use certain terms or, or, or when they talk about their music or something like that, and I can't help but think I'm not going to like it right off the bat. It's yeah. like 
even if, they, if if it's meant in the best way possible. Whenever I hear somebody describing, ah, oh, we're working on this new record, it's it's next level. As soon as I hear that word next level, I'm like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean? I know. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 you know, uh, as somebody in the arts uh, and entertainment field, obviously, uh, uh, how were you uh, and or uh, sheer terror uh, uh, affected by uh, COVID? You know, did it derail any plans that you had at that time? How did it personally affect you guys? We, um, I mean, we had we had. I, don't, I can't even remember if we had anything booked. I know, I'm sure we did, but um, I mean, we we we're not, we're not exactly the busiest band in the world to begin with. Right. Like, it was only in the past, like maybe ten years, that I've been trying to get a little bit busier now that I have you know, oh, th that I can, and I have people that I can work with that don't yeah. want to just sit at home and wait for it to be handed to them. Yeah. Um. I'm sure we missed it. There was a couple of shows that had to get canceled or something like that, things we were working on. Uh, but we, you know, <laughs> a lot, and, and I forget who, who else was talking about this. I think it was it was either a, a stand up comic or, or a writer, uh, either one, same, same thing. Um, they talked about, like, okay, you know, okay, here we are, we got COVID, and we have all this time off. And you know, we're the time like to work on this and work on that, we can work on new material and get things done. You shit. Because no. <laughs> yeah. you sit around at home, you're like, oh, all right, I don't feel like really doing anything, or you're like, well, I could do yard work and you're going outside <laughs> and you're shoveling mulch and pea gravel, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or doing something like that. You're not thinking about like, oh, maybe I should work on some new songs because then you're like, ah. Whatever, because you get you get caught up in the, the the parts of life that maybe you you've been neglecting, yeah, uh, or or wishing would not be there, and and you so take care of that. And you're not even thinking about it. So like I, I try to work on new lyrics and stuff like that. I just was at a, I'm still I'm kind of trying to get over this dry spell, but I was at a really bad dry spell during COVID. And what is the impetus for you, though, like your own creative process when you're going to sit down and and write lyrics, as you said, you know, uh, at this stage of your career. And I, obviously, there's still plenty of shit out in the world to get, you know, uh, uh, jump started and, 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 and get that anger going, that ferocity that's really required in hardcore lyrics, uh, especially. But where do you find the impetus for your for your stuff? You know, is it the news and, and, and newspapers and, and, and shit like that? Like, what's the thing that, that, that you tap into to really get inspired? Honestly, at this stage of the game, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's been fucked up lately. I mean, I never really wrote social political lyrics. I mean, the book here didn't get to be able to believe in all the personal is political. Not that I would go on and on about that. Uh, but I never really tried to write anything like, all right, this is the blame for this, and this is why this is happening. Or like, I didn't yeah. like politically minded, really, because. There are plenty of people out there that can do a way better job than I can. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I know what I know, and I, of course, I'm always trying to learn more about what's going on in the world. I don't want to be blind to it. I don't want to be, I don't want to be one of these people. Oh, we're anti politics. So you're not anti politics. You just right, don't want to right. deal with shit. Right. I don't want to deal with shit if I got I'm not going to ever say I'm anti politics. I just don't deal with that subject matter because, like I said, a lot of more people out there are way better to deal with than I am. Yeah. And I, I know that I'm. I'm, I'm wrong about certain things because I, I don't have enough knowledge about it. Not out of choice, out of, I just, well, maybe it was choice, who knows. But I'm not trying to be ignorant. I don't want to be ignorant. Ig if anything, uh, the, the, uh, ignorance, if anything, that's one thing that'll drive me to write. Uh, and uh, and uh, just sadness, uh, you, know, you know, of course, you, you know, melancholy, depression, stuff like that. So, it's something I've been dealing with all my life. And, yeah. Uh, and, and I, I've always had a knack and a love for, like, you know, love gone wrong songs and whatnot. And not every serious ever song is a love song, by no means. But, you know, I, I, you know I, since I was a kid, I, I always loved, like, Jesus Christ, uh, we had uh, the eight tracks with Simon and Garfunkel and, then, yeah. and Bobby Sherman and, and, and uh, uh, God, Rolling Stones, Goat's Head Soup on eight track. That was interesting. <laughs> Some of these people get like four. <laughs> so. You know, it's like um, I just always, always love stuff like that. I always love like like sad, depressing stuff. I was always, always, it just always did something for me. Yeah, that's why I would be a huge soul fan and everything, and uh, and like old country, 
So it's like I, whatever like real, I'm feeling at the time. It's it's really hard to say. Like you know, what it drives me to write because sometimes I wish I knew. I really do wish I knew because I can't just sit down and and be like, okay, I'm getting to work now. I know there are a lot of guys who can't do that. And I'm just, yeah. I tried. And yeah. It, it just I'll come up with something. I'll hate it. And then there's the rewrites, and then and I go crazy. Yeah. I had I don't know a stack of about. I don't know, anything about 15, 16, whatever, uh, notebooks and stuff like that, that I've been t toting around for fucking years. <laughs> all across country, you know, yeah. all this in storage, out of storage, all this shit. Yeah. About, about two years ago or so, I burned it all. Yeah. I stuck it in. I moved up for an hour and a half uh, northwest of the city. Yeah. I'm up here, uh, and I got a group, you know, me and my homeowner. Uh, Acre land, blah blah blah. I had a burn barrel on the driveway. Yeah. I was like, one night I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I yeah. Went in the house, got my stuff, doused the gas, torched it all. Yeah. I wasn't using it. It was sitting there feel carry, carrying around all this crap for no fucking reason. And you and didn't I, feel like, and, and you were sure your stairway to heaven wasn't in one of these notebooks? You know what? I <laughs> went through those things so many times. <laughs> and some of the stuff was okay. Yeah. But some of it was like, whatever. A lot of it was whatever, but I. <laughs> this is where the the the, the psychosis comes out. Yeah, yeah. I look at I, I I'm trying to get over this, but it's just kind of easy now that I don't have that stuff to look at. But if I was working on new material, I would see stuff that that I had written in the past that was never right. used for anything, mind you. Right. Never used for lyrics, any. If I were to use that for new material. That would be cheating. Yeah, because I, I have new, I have a new song and new stuff to write. Why am I taking this old stuff and putting it with the new stuff? Right, right. It makes absolutely so. No one's ever read it, heard it. Up here. Right, right. But up here, that's cheating. Yeah, right, right, right. I can make a problems. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no. Listen, man. I hear you completely, man. I mean, I, you know, I'm that same way too. And and all the times that I've tried to write in the past, like whether I get a fart in my head that I want to, you know, get creative. You know, they say everyone's got a novel inside of them or this and that. Not as easy as it looks, though. And and especially, yeah. love, 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 you know, when you do have that mental impairment, because I have it too. Where like, you know, people say, let the creative process just flow. Right, 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 and then edit later. I can't. Every page, I'm I'm self editing, and I'm saying, yeah. how can I make that? Fucking sentence better, and it's driving. Exactly. I drive myself nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah, big time. I mean, especially with lyrics, and uh, I, uh, well, I'm working on a book now, kind of, sort of. It's like stuff that I already had written. Well, it's stuff that I had written, but I don't want to hear. So I'm, like, I'm trying to get over that. It's stuff that I had written, but it's not lyrically, and it's not really autobiographical. Some okay. of the stories are. Not okay. like this. Well, maybe we'll go into that later, but. Yeah, I with the writing, it's 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 yeah, I, I can't. I, I you know, it, it hits me, it hits me, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, and if it doesn't, I there's something I can do. I can't force it out of me because then I get pissed off at myself, right? And, get, yeah, and, and then I wind up with crap, and I don't right. I've done plenty of that already, I don't need any more. And I was never like ever, it's like I remember like uh, like old band members or like whatever, like I'd be going to like a bad, a bad stretch. Or whatever I get in my life, or bands like that, they'd be like, you know, oh man, I wish we were writing right now because you're like at the perfect time to be writing. Yeah, and I'd laugh, I used to laugh about it back then, but not but now. I was like, man, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> what a dick. really? I'm hurting right now. You want to write a new song? I'm a yeah. fucking yeah. dick. You know? <laughs> I'm a is, it, <laughs> is it hard now with all the changes in the music business now? To even put together, like, and I don't know how this works, you, 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 you know, specifically in the hardcore world, but you know, obviously, you know, when you're getting bullet points on bands and stuff, and and, and you go do your research, invariably, you always seem to end up on their Wikipedia page, and especially like in the metal or extreme uh, metal world, you always see the dreaded laundry list of ex-members. You know, what I mean, there's always a fucking <laughs> lot. Some bands have a lot. Do you find it hard, hard like, like nowadays? You know, uh, is it a morale thing where guys are kind of jaded? on the business and is it hard to keep like a you know a core group of guys together where guys just don't say i i got a nine to five i don't fucking need it you know like yeah it's it's it's, it's definitely getting harder now um because yeah like i said like you know we're not kids anymore 
So, like, there were some guys who are or, or, or lifers who pitched it all away, like myself, years ago. Yeah. And he was like, you know, this is what I want to do. This is all I've ever wanted to do. And, you know, I've had every job under the sun, from the construction, the drywall, the painting. Yeah. I did security at nightclubs and bars for uh, 25 years. And uh, I, 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 I do construction in between and whatever else. I, whatever I got to do, I would do. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was employed to make it some money. But the music always came first. This is what I want to do. And, but unfortunately, in the past, I was uh, I, I, I would have band members who said they wanted to do it, and they seen they wanted to do it, and they right. you know, they were talented enough to do it. But then when it came down to brass tacks and having have, actually having to work, they were expecting it to be like a lot easier. Yeah. Like when we got signed to MCA, which was a stupid fucking mistake anyway. <laughs> they were expecting like, oh, we're going to get bigger tours now. We're going to get this. We're going to get no, now we really got to work. Yeah, we got to yeah. we got to go out there and prove this shit. Yeah, and they weren't seeing it happen, and that's why they left. And that's why they, two of the guys had left because they got harder and they got real jobs and stuff like that. Where well, I was like, well, I don't want a fucking real job, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, like, <laughs> an idiot, you know? That's what, that's what all I ever wanted to do. Yeah, and now I, you know, luckily, I mean, it's it's I put the bed in what twelve about twelve years ago or something like that. I got put the back together. Um, luckily now I had, had some members back then who again they, they wanted to do it and then they could you know the, the jobs and there's some of that and that happened a few times and it's you know, it was hard breaking but I was like you know what am I gonna do I'm not gonna stop now right right and so now I'm lucky where I have you know my guitarist especially my guitarist who's you know he had a he he just quit his job or whatever it was that he had for years he used to work uh, barges. And, uh, and scows and so like that. It, it, yeah. It was, you know, a shipment or whatever. And great guy, he did it for years, but a uh, long story longer, he's not doing that right now, but he's got the money put away. He, you know, he was smart at least. And, uh, but all he wants to do is go out and play guitar. He yeah. Was, he, and even back then, like he had the time, the time put into the job where he'd be like, all right, I'm going to be on for a month. But he'd come back, as soon as he get back, he'd go straight to work. Right. Work days, right. Like, whatever. But and then my drummer as well, old uh, that we have now, John Besser. Um, this is pretty much what he does is play drums. Uh, he, he he's uh, a session guy. And my guitarist, uh, they uh, John, they grew up. They both in John um, grew up together out of Staten Island. They know each other since okay. kids. So that was this opportunity to get John to play drums. I had never met him before. And he's um, a yeah, session guy. Always play like rock and roll, metal. This, that, one. I mean, it was hardcore stuff with his punk stuff and everything. But yeah. it wasn't necessarily, not necessarily in his wheelhouse, but he, he knew about it. He knew how to play it or whatever. And uh, he's solid, hard hitting drummer, great guy. And he's playing with us now. And um, the bass player I have, Brendan, same difference. Like, he's always going out with either he feels him like playing bass with Madball or he, he's teching for uh, so, uh, suicidal tendencies yeah. or whatever. About this. So he's always out there working anyway. Yeah. The only problem with Brendan is he lives in Rochester. Yes. I, I've been in contact with him. He's going to come on and do the podcast, so I've been talking to him. I didn't know he was that close to me, though. I'm yeah. I'm in upstate, but I'm closest to Syracuse. Okay, yeah, he's all the way up there. Yeah. The other two guys, like, you know, one guy's in Staten Island, one's in, one's in Manhattan. Yeah. I'm only an hour and a half away from them, but I'm like five hours away from Brendan. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of hard for to get together. It, it, it sucks, you know? So we were trying to work on new material, so you know, and I, I'm not mad at Brendan, but I don't expect him to move. Right, you know? right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, like, it, it's hard for them to get together, you know? like, it's, and it's expensive, cancel and everything. Yeah. So we're working through that now, and well, as soon as we're going to be announcing a new bass player soon. Okay. We're going to because you know I, I would love Brendan for him to be able to stay in the band, but we got to have something closer that we can work with more. Yeah, and, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I I can't get mad at Brendan. And I, I right, remember. right. Is it hard nowadays, like when you're getting like offers and stuff too? Like you know, you, you mentioned everybody getting older, and and you know the narrative in your life changes. You've got like you, you know you move away, or you have kids, or a job that tethers you to the area, or whatever. Is it hard, you know, to tour as everybody gets older? And like, what's that like? Like working out the itinerary with all these different personalities in a band? Is it is, is it hard? Actually, it's not. If anything, it's not easier for us. Yeah. If anything, it's not easier because uh, my guitar is John. Uh, like I said, he had a great job, and he had it, he had it worked out, and everything like this, where he would leave, but they have to come back to work. But now he's moving on to another uh, avenue in life, 
and starting another business and getting away from the work in the, the barges and the ships. Um, he has two boys, but they're all in their twenties. Yeah, they're adults. Yeah, they're adults. They have their own jobs, their own families going on, so like that. So you ain't got to worry about them. He's got a wife, and she's got you know she works and everything like that. And they have an apartment in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're good. They're good. My my drummer, same thing. Um, he you know like I said, such a guy. He's always working. Yeah, so he's going out. With, you know he he plays with this band, uh, but they they make great money. Yeah, uh, it's a cover, uh, like a new country band. A cover, it's all covers. Yeah, like this new country crap. People eat that. People eat that up. Yeah, yeah. He don't yeah. give a shit about, but it, makes, yeah. it, it pays his fucking bills. You know? Yeah, yeah. So he he does that, or he or he does recordings with this guy, or he goes out with that guy. You know, one whatever. So he he he's doing what he's gonna want to do. I luckily I'm I'm not gonna I'm ashamed to admit it. I fell into some shit. I figured I I you know. My 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 wife to be. I'm getting married in October. She's the breadwinner in this house, without a doubt. Mine is too, though. Mine is too. Me and my wife are both in healthcare, but I'm 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 I always kid her. I'm just a lowly LPN. She's an RN, so she's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my wife. She works for the United Nations. Okay. So uh, I couldn't even explain her job. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I go cross-eyed thinking about it myself sometimes. <laughs> 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 but she she works and um most of the time she's working from home uh especially since sort of the covid thing yeah so she's still working out now she might have to go in once or twice a week drive in or whatever but she also has um she was diagnosed about three years ago with ms multiple sclerosis which it must be effects with leg if anything yeah and, um sometimes you know she's got good her good days and her bad days sure sometimes, sometimes with her leg you know she can't go the whole day without having to sit and stuff like that so it's the traveling really it gets her, but uh, she, she's doing good. We just did an MS walk yesterday. We, we raised a bunch of money. Great. Great. That's day. great. We walked a mile. We did you could have three miles. We did a mile. That was good enough. And she did the whole thing, which I was proud of us to do it. You know, so with that we did that. But yeah, so she yeah, she's the breadwinner really in this house. I you know whatever money I make on the road or make for the band, I I, I, I throw it at her. I'm like, hey, take this. You know, I'll take a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. Take a little bit to buy my toys or my records or whatever, pay my bills. Yeah, you know, whatever I got, and the rest, I, you know, I put in sweat equity here at the house. <laughs> and what about your what about your own personal uh, journey right now? Like, as far as like you know, because obviously you know, I I just turned fifty in January. What about your own personal health and still being able to do this at the level that you want to do it? How are you specifically doing? I'm trying. To, I'm doing. I'm doing okay. I had to lose weight. Like I did gain weight during COVID. Yeah, I got the biggest I've ever been. I got over three hundred pounds, and I'd never yeah. been three hundred pounds before. And yeah. I, I was weighing myself. I got lazy. I wasn't doing shit, and I got, I got fat. Bottom line, because I was uh, I wasn't doing anything. So I've been trying to be more active, uh, you know, doing how, yard work or whatnot, and yeah, just just moving around or whatever, exercising and whatever I can. It's not like I'm sitting here doing jumping jacks, something like that. But I, I'll do my <laughs> stretches, you know. I'll do my stretches and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. A pseudo yoga type of thing or whatever. Yeah. But then I go out. I'll, I'll do yard work or whatever. We got a uh, an, an elliptical machine which I, I still have yet to use. I'm maybe hit that thing tomorrow. And uh, you know, just try, I had to lose weight. I, I've been to the doctor. I, I had my colonoscopy done. Me all too. Clear, Me all too. clear with that. Uh, my blood pressure is good. Everything else is good. My heart is good. I am pre-diabetic, which means I can beat that so i'm yeah. on my the, the pills or whatever two pills i take a day and then this is actually kind of i had no idea about any of this stuff um i've been now for the past like month or so been doing uh the injections or well, the ozempic yes 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 that will really help with the way as somebody that works in healthcare, uh you know i do know that a lot of people are turning to that for weight loss though they yeah, are well, they, they, some of them they go crazy with it though yeah, you know, they're using it. I'm, I'm using it because I, because of pre, pre diabetes, and I'm trying to beat that. I didn't I had no idea about the weight loss thing. And then my, my girl's like, Oh, really? I was like, What are you talking about? And I went online, I was like, Holy shit, I yeah. know people in Hollywood are like abusing it and losing all this weight fast because you, you're using something, you're not hungry. Yeah, so this, you know, yeah. Something to eat, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I, think, I never, I wasn't like a big eater to begin with. I just was lazy and I wasn't burning it off. Yeah. 
you know, I, I, I eat sensibly. I eat what I want to eat. I, I, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying. And, and this, and this, it, this is helping because, you know, I, I'm eating smaller meal. I'm not that, like I said, I don't eat big meals anyway, but now with this whole epic thing, it's, it's getting smaller and I'm feeling okay. And I'm just trying yeah. to not abuse it, but, you know, it, hey, if it's going to help, fuck it, you know? God bless science. Yeah, yeah, God <laughs> bless you. Yeah, <laughs> amen to that. And 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 when you're gonna plan, like to you, you know, to to write new music or do any kind of project, you know, I, I, you know, as you say, you want to get more active or whatever. Do you guys or 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 do you have a definitive idea in mind uh, about what the release format is uh, that works best for this band? I, obviously, it's a polarizing topic. You're seeing a lot of people. The attention span has dwindled with people. You know, uh, a lot of people feel like. You know, got to be always putting something out and staying relevant. You know, singles, EPs, yeah. all this stuff. Or, or do you still have that old school mentality where where sheer terror is going to put out an LP? Well, we did the singles, and we did it. We did a couple of EPs and uh, flexies and stuff like that. And I, I do that because it's fun. I yeah. mean, yeah, it does help you keep relevant, stay relevant, I guess. But I do it because it's fun. I'm, I'm also I'm a record nerd myself. Yeah, yeah. So you know, this is a you know. A flexi disc, or, or, or I got a new seven inch out, it's colored vinyl. All right, cool. I put it in with the bin with yeah. something like that. So, I, you know, I, I get a kick out of that because I get a kick. That's what I do. Yeah. I, mean, I thought I got rid of a lot of stuff that I had because I didn't need every single colored vinyl that my record right. is on. Right. And right. I, I don't listen to them anyway. Right. As a collector, <laughs> You know, as an avid collector, are you worried that we might be in the era of seeing the death of a physical product with all this technology? Or do you feel like albums are, you know, like wax albums will always be made? Albums are back. Vinyl is back. Vinyl is huge, uh, which actually bothers me uh, to, to, to an extent because I always preferred vinyl anyway. Yeah. Uh, but... With the, now with that, the, it's it's, uh, it's becoming popular again, and the uh, the majors and whatnot are latching onto these depressing plants that are, that were there aren't there anymore. Right. So they they go into these smaller present plants that were, you know, surviving on independent music, and now they're getting thrown the big corporate dollar, and yeah. they can't get made it for taking it. I mean, it's it right. a lot of money. Right. The only problem is it takes away the time and and needed. To press up independent records, independent smaller labels, and everything like that, then they, they don't have the time to to, to do it. And right. they, it. It's pushing a lot of records being pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. There's that, and also, not every fucking record needs to be re-released. Right. Right. I'm sorry. Right. We don't need another fucking uh, oppressing a fleet with Mac rumors. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and for, all these kids. When I record, especially when I was working at the bar, especially that fucking record, holy jeez, I never flew with my friend to begin with, but that fucking record, all these young girls singing along and dancing yeah. around and that, yeah. you're going to have to be my daughter, Mike. Yeah. And I'm like, if you only knew how much fucking cocaine is on this fucking record, honey, you would not be fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be so thrilled about it, right? <laughs> yeah, that was the yeah, uh, that was certainly the uh, parlance of the times, right? A lot of cocaine being made on those. Uh, oh yeah, and, and, if, anything, on those. I, if anything, I'm I'm jealous of people right? because I would kill for some fucking seventies cocaine right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now and now and now I've seen you in past episodes, Ola. You're not just a collector, but you know, contrary to what people you know certainly uh, would believe, uh, you know, based on the type of music that Sheer Terror performs. You know, that's not what you listen to as a fan, though, correct? Like, you wouldn't want to just listen to heavy music all the time. No, I mean, I like, I mean, I, 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 I there are some newer bands out there that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find out about or whatnot. I actually, I go on Bandcamp and certain labels that have put out, like, certainly heavier music. That's why I find a lot of this new, 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 new stuff, whatever. Yeah. Like, like and, and it's like, I, you know, I, I, if I'm in the mood, I'm, I'm, I'm in the mood. And some of it's like the, the, the heavier, more hardcore punk type of stuff. And, and yeah. it's, it, it's, bru it, 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 it's, 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 uh, primal. It's real simple, but yeah. it's hard, real hard. And the recording yeah. is raw. I get a kick out of shit like that. Cause that's shit I loved when I was a kid. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm, you know, I collect old, uh, well, I collect what I listen to. I don't just collect these cause it's rare. Right. There's a lot of shitty rare records out there. Sure. There's a lot of money and they yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, I collect and I DJ uh, 60s and 70s Northern and so Northern Soul and, and crossover soul records. 
45. Okay. For people but, that aren't familiar with what that genre is, like when you say Northern Soul, for people in the audience who might not know, well, what is that? What is that? It's dance music. It, 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 it's, it's American music. Uh, it, it got popular in England. Um, without getting too, too far, uh, going too crazy about it, uh, think uh, Motown. Think the backbeat. Okay. That, 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 like there's a lot of that. It's it's dance music. If you okay. can't dance it, you can't dance. Period. Okay. <laughs> you should even try. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I, a lot a lot of that. Um, old like uh seventies uh reggae and dub and early okay. dub records I love. Scientist, uh, stuff like Nicodemus, uh, stuff like that. Pliers. Uh, you didn't go with the dance hall, the pliers or stuff like that. I like a lot of that stuff. And this old punk rock stuff, Wire is probably one of my favorite bands. Yeah. Um, and I just got to sort of get into the Wire, the later Wire albums, uh, just the past couple of years that was I never really paid attention to, like a Bell is a Cup, which is the phenomenal yeah. record. Yeah. And um, Wire, uh, Public Image Limited, stuff like that. I really yep. think uh, Mekons and stuff. Uh, and this old, like, like, I'm a big, huge, I'm, 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 I'm an, um, an anglophile to an extent. I love the old English punk rock stuff. Yeah, I've always had an affinity for it, and uh, I really, I really do dig a lot of that stuff. And, and I, I collect that, but I collect so I like it. I listen to it. And uh, do I have a lot of expensive records? Yeah, I got a good, good size, but I clean them. Yeah, you know I, mean? yeah. I, mean, I don't play them all the time. Right. So I'm you're not the kind of guy that leaves it in plastic and won't let anybody touch it, or do you have records I, like that? Well, I don't bring them out to DJ. Okay. I bring, I bring when I when I DJ my, my soul. There's a couple of records in there I really shouldn't be bringing out, but the really ones I, I don't like. I, probably one of my price I, I mentioned before in, in interviews. Um, the last real big drop that I did a record was probably about two years ago or so. Uh, Eunice Collins on Mod Art Records um, uh, at the hotel. It's a forty-five. Okay. I. You know the record doesn't. You never see it. You never see it. It's a very, it's a rare record. You never rare, it. very rare. But it's a great, it's a beautiful song. Beautiful, beautiful. It's song. one song on an album, or it's a concert. Yeah, it's a forty-five. Okay, okay. It's a forty-five, and that cost me just shy of a grand. Okay, okay. Which actually is not that bad these days. No. Considering if I would have still had my misfits fucking forty-fives instead of selling them because I was starving to death years ago, yeah, yeah I would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> Because on some of those records, that's just, it's criminal what they go for. It's and like, where do you find this kind of stuff? Are you somebody that goes out to like, like uh, you know, are you somebody that peruses the internet and finds out like where it's you're having mo records? Mostly, mostly the internet, because there's really not too many record stores. Well, there's nothing around here, with it, especially. Um, but mostly the internet, uh, eBay, Discogs, uh, certain dealers that I know or whatnot. Or I have people who uh, own or work at record stores, stuff like stuff for me, a little keep an eye out for stuff for me. Whatnot. Yeah. Uh, YouTube is great also because there's a lot of um, really good, uh, especially with the soul stuff, uh, a lot of really good uh, uh, DJs. Yeah. That DJ, all the northern uh, crossover soul stuff. Yeah. And they'll put up their collections on eBay. I mean, eBay, uh, YouTube, the, the videos. And that's a good way to find stuff that you, you either hadn't heard before or whatnot. Jives and, the memory. Yeah. Yeah. You go on there, like, oh, what's this one? You listen to it, you're like, oh, and then the search begins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's always fun. That's always fun. But like I said, not every rare record is worth the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. lot of five thousand dollar forty fives out there that suck. <laughs> yeah. And when you look back to that eighties uh, hardcore scene, you, you, you know, backpedaling uh, uh, again, uh, uh, do you think that it, you know? And and of course, I'm partial. You know, being from uh, you know, you know, uh, New York State myself, uh, you know, I will defend the New York hardcore scene. Uh, it's the best, I think, in my opinion. It's where it was really, you know, uh, where where I feel like hardcore was really, really born. But do you think, uh, again, getting back to how you guys were able to make that music, uh, uh, you know, do you think that, 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 you know, the general attitude of being a New Yorker plays into the music? Because obviously we're cut from a little bit different cloth, you know what I mean? Like maybe New Yorkers in general. Well, maybe at one point in time it did. Nowadays, I'm not really sure because... It was also a different New York back then, though, too. Well, yeah, it was a, a totally different city, totally different New York. And actually, how many New Yorkers are left anymore? Yeah. And all these people, they were 
or a born and bred New York, or they yeah. might be, or it's really in the city. You have your New Yorkies like myself, or go over to Staten Island, or like the Brooklyn fucking years, or the Yankees, or whatever, whatever. And then you have your, your New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a difference. Well, what says the enunciation going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's 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 hard to you know it, it, back 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 in the day I hate that term, but it, it was it was a different city a different world altogether. I can and, tell it. I can tell. It. I mean, just reading Roger from Agnostic Front's book, you know, what I mean, it harkens back to like a time where, or you know, where I, I feel like I don't know if that scene was going to start up right now, if it would ever get traction and be able to go anywhere right now. Though. It would have been. It would have been. I think it would have been a little more, way more difficult because it's like you know, places to play. Or whatnot. I mean, there are there are places to play. Don't get me wrong. Nowadays, so that was like, the book. But but with those, uh, I don't know if those places would exist, or if anybody would care if there wasn't something before him. Right. Right. You know, like and especially with the, the real estate these days, you know, it ain't exactly the easiest thing to do. Open up a venue and be like, "Hey, come on in, kids." Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it ain't right. simple no more. Whereas back back then, you know, it'd be like. Oh, it's just basically a bed in half burned out building that a couple of families might live in. Might live right, in. right, right, and right. You, you, there's the guy who says he owns the building, and you're giving him $100 a month, and he's like, yeah, sure, go ahead, do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Well, that's why I asked at the top of the interview if that ethos and that moral code has kind of changed because, and this is certainly not to impugn any bands doing hardcore now, but you do tend to see, you know, it, it being more kids who look a little more like they're from suburbia. And, and you know, when you read Roger's book, you think more about you guys down on the Lower East Side and just being such a different New York, a more dangerous New York, a more, as you said earlier, a dirtier, kind of scuzzier New York City, you know, that felt like it kind of, it, that it was kind of the breeding ground for that type of music. Yeah, well, it was there was that and then of course there was the punk rock before us and everything as well and there was that influence that always was there and some of those people and some of those people were still around too and yeah. around. some anyway um but also it's like these the kids today they didn't grow up punk rock right they didn't get into hardcore through punk rock or anything well then right. they grew up heavy metal with iron maiden or Slayer, right. and they got some of the heavier bands, and right, Slayer or Destruction, or I, I don't even know <laughs> what the hell what bands. It's yeah, just, I'm still thinking eighty. <laughs> yeah. You know I usually I mean? do. I, yeah, I, I I usually do too. And, and and doing the podcast, you know, it's great having established artists, iconic artists who've been doing it for a long time. You know, I've certainly had a you know. Uh, doing over 120 episodes. I, I've had plenty of those on here, but it is nice to give young bands and young artists, you know, a platform. And I'm trying to make myself be better about it because I don't want to yeah. be that old codger who just, when I have time to listen to music, I, I, yeah. and I'm guilty of it. I fall back on my old standards. If I have time to listen to it, you only got so many hours yeah. in the day. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's hard. No, it, it's, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And it's like, I'm not mad. Like I've said it many times with the kids out there today, and with their bands and what they're doing, I'm not necessarily a fan of a lot of it, of a lot of it, the majority of it. But I don't have to be. It's not meant for me. Right. You know what I mean? My right. music already exists, and what I'm doing is I'm doing, and I have my audience. If the young kids like it, great. That's you know, it's fantastic. But yeah. they don't have to, and I'm not right. going to get mad at them if they don't. You know, I'm a 55 year old man who's been you know going right through the fucking ringer. There's some freaking you know 18 year old kid who maybe has got a cross to bear or something or a, a grudge or something, but you know, I'm not going to try to identify with him. That would be criminal. I mean, right. how, how dare I? You know, and right. how can he identify with me? You know, I, like you said, uh, about a week or whatever. Life has to punch him in the face a couple of times before maybe he can understand. And yeah. I'm, I don't wish that on him, but that's what's going to happen. Right, right, that's right. Happen, but then, then maybe he'll see where I'm coming from, and maybe he won't. But you know, like you know, time will tell. Well, it also seems like those bands back in that era, too, when you guys were starting out, it seemed like there was a lot more of the uh, due-paying process, you know, so to speak. You guys are really out there and playing these dingy clubs, and, you, you know, you kind of had to be like a workhorse. I mean, it seems like we're kind of back to that now because the business being so feast or famine, it seems like these bands, you know, even if they're elder statesmen, they got to be out there slogging it on the road all the time. Yeah, and it's, you know, it, it can be taxing. It can be taxing sometimes, you know, especially, well, it depends on the time of year. It's especially in the summer. I mean, we're getting ready to go to Europe and spend a whole month of July in Europe. Yeah. And that's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, 
But you know, it, it you know it can be tied to uh, the weather and what and traveling conditions. Uh, you know, especially when you get older. But you know, either you know, you know, like well, what am I gonna do? I can go home and go to work. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll be out here with my idiot friends playing fucking music, and some of the clubs are to get what you get, and some of them are really fucking nice. Yeah. Appreciate it now. Yeah, yeah. But you're older, you're like, whoa, this yeah. couch is fucking clean. Yeah. I don't mind laying down here. Yeah, yeah. You know, they made us food. Look yeah. at this fucking thing. You know? this, is a nice, this is a nice deli tray. You know, fucking ice. <laughs> <laughs> the little things. I know they take you know, for granted. You enough. appreciate it. You appreciate it. And it's nice. And it's like, all right, great. And yeah. sometimes that'll be one night. And then the next night, Domino's pizza and a warm bottle of Coke. Yeah. But you know, it, it's it, it, it is what it is. Right. It is right. what it is. You may, and you make do of what you get. And I'm always appreciative of stuff like that. Like, you know, especially you know, you go you show up in some of these places, especially like in Europe or whatever. And some of the backstage spreads there, like, well, oh, geez, you know, I, yeah. do I deserve this. You yeah. know? <laughs> I'm like, wow. And especially if the, if the you know, you go back and you get the backstage, you get the spread of Hus Valley, and it's amazing and the food is great. And then like not so great a turnout. Yeah, yeah. You're so bad. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, but they treated us so good. Ugh, fuck. You know, you almost feel bad for wasting their time almost. Well, and, well and, and I'm sure you've been through this a lot, you know I mean, being on the road for so long, uh, you know, but how do you approach that? I, I'm always interested in, in the mentality of like, you know, uh, like when you're geared up for a show, because, you know, I, I imagine when you're about to hit the stage, me not being a performer myself, it certainly, you know, you want to have that 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 shot of adrenaline. You want to feel charged up. You know, is it tough to go out there and hit the stage and see only a few people out there? And 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 and, and how do you gear up for it mentally? Um, I just you know, of course, everybody wants to go out and see a packed house. Yeah, of course you do. I mean, that's, sure. you know what you that's that's the dream. Go out there, packed house, everybody loving you, singing your praises and whatnot. And sometimes that happens. I mean, sometimes. There's 20 people, and one kid, both of kid, kid running around in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've you all know. seen him. We've seen him oh, on the yeah. video. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, it's like the way we're like, well, what am I going to do? I'm not yeah. going to, like, walk over and say, I'm not going to act like I'm disappointed. Yeah, sometimes maybe the energy may be a little not, mm, but right. you go out there, do your bit. And if anything, with somebody small or what each is, I can get a little bit, a little bit more personal with them. It's not yeah. like, what I got to say. Yeah, and I can tell my stupid jokes or tell a story. Of course, it depends on the country if they understand me or not. And, but they, you know, I could do that and be a little bit more personable rather than there's fifteen hundred people there and they just want the next fucking song. And yeah, they, you know, and and you think they can barely hear what you're saying anyway. You yeah. know what I mean? Where if there's like maybe twenty, thirty people, I can like tell them this stupid joke I heard or this happened to me the other night. You know, I had a bird. Uh, Nesting on my porch, and she almost died. Like I can tell these stories, you right, know I mean? right, right, right. A little they, more intimate. They, whereas they, they leave. Yeah, but when they leave that show, they got to remember that. Yeah, and they can tell their friends, like you know, how, how was the show? Oh, there's a lot of people, but he told this story that was, you know what I mean? Yeah, they don't remember yeah. that. Don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, plus those people, people. Well, plus those people paid. So I mean, I, I, I guess when you look yeah. at it that way, yeah, even the ten people that could be there deserve the best that you can give them. I mean, exactly, exactly. And sometimes the smaller shows they'll get they'll get better because like yeah, they'll, they'll be more personable, and I'll have time to talk to everybody. Or yeah, whatever, you know, if, if, if they want to, you know, if they want yeah. to talk to whatever. Where it's too crowded, and I don't really necessarily do great with crowds, as in like when I'm getting like surrounded. Yeah. Well, sometimes Uncle Paulie gets a little punchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I can see. Yeah, I, I know some of those clubs is a very intimate setting, and then you know it, it, it's enough that you guys are up there playing, but then you get these kids coming up and jumping off. I imagine it can be very chaotic. I don't mind if, if they're coming on the stage and jumping off, that's fantastic. I'm not a fan of the whole. Hey, she's on stage. Your stage too. Come on up and thirty yeah. fucking keep forty. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you go get your own band. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start know? your own. Yeah, start your own it's group. It's just my time. <laughs> Now, what's the difference you see with you? You know, like when you do go to the, and I'm always intrigued by this too. And I talked about it with, uh, you know, 
uh, other hard rock slash, you know, metal mm -hmm. slash hardcore musicians on here. What are the differences you see when, you know, w w uh, as opposed to when you're here touring here in, the, in North America as when you go over to Europe? You know, it seems like European fans are, are just so great. You see so many of the festivals over there. It really seems like they have uh, an appreciation. And that's not to impugn us here in the States. No, no, I, you know. no, I know you say they, they kind of, it, you know, it depends really on where you are and what city you are over there. Yeah. Because, I mean, and especially what kind of show, you know, I mean, if, it, if it's, a, you know, it, 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 it's like the festivals, because people, they travel. Right. Over. And of course, like, you know, see like, you know, I don't know, let's, put, let's take, let's take a, uh, agnostic front. Yeah. Brothers of mine. Yeah. For many, many Love years. Love them. Like we're family, you know, none of them. Very, very long time. Roger. And, and you'll see some of the festivals they're playing and it's like 40,000 people. Yeah. And people are jumping around. Going, but you know, and, that, and that's great. Yeah. But, yeah. But not all those 40,000 people are there for agnostic front. <laughs> you know, and they know right. that, right? But, yeah, but a lot of people don't realize that they think, like, Oh, wow, 40,000 people, yeah, but not all of them were there for that. They were there, right. because they've been there all fucking weekend, right? Right, they're right. Waiting, they're waiting for the band going on after them. Who maybe you've heard of, maybe you have, right? Because right. That happens a lot too. You play these festivals, and you know, these people hang out, they're having a good time, and all this. And then there's a band after you that you've never heard of, and they're from America too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? And people are like going ape shit for them. They're like, okay, you whatever, you know, you maybe learn something. But it's also, you know, at one point in time, Europe was, you know, it was a lot like the very receptive, especially the festivals and certain shows, of certain bands, not for every band, because at one point in time, Europe was a lot more receptive and a lot more open and everything like that because there was something kind of new. The you know the door will come down and something like that, and the country's opening up and yeah. bands are out there on tour. Now the spoil right. Yeah. Now they get everybody all the fucking time. Yeah. Like yeah. In the summertime, stuff like that. That's why in the summertime you want to try to hit up as many festivals as you possibly can because a lot of the house shows will be because they travel. Yeah. They yeah. go on holiday. Oh, we're yeah. going holiday. And yeah, they, yeah. They, they, <laughs> they travel around for fucking two weeks, going to festivals and all this shit. You know. Yeah. And, and that's what they do. Yeah. And, but so like now they're, they're kind of spoiled and like they won't always, they're not they always like, you know, I mean, I love Berlin. I love Belgium. I love Japan. You know, and, so, and I, I, only in the past couple of years have I really gotten an affinity for the Netherlands. For, I don't know why it took me so long. Yeah. <laughs> but, and the UK I love because of my whole Anglophile and all this ways and everything. Like yeah. And, uh, but and, and I'm 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 grateful to be anywhere I am. Actually, you know, honestly, yeah, I'm grateful to be there. But yes, it, it at one point, like, especially like with the hardcore thing, it's like maybe it, it's changed now. I haven't really paid attention. Like, I'll be honest. Uh, with the like, if you go to Germany and you would and you would hear a German hardcore band, right? But they're singing in an English, and they're trying to sound like a New York band, and you don't really, it, you know, not that every New Yorker was such a freaking uh, a, a poet and not in waiting there, right? right. But, <laughs> but uh, it's like you know, the, the the diction isn't exactly the best, <laughs> right? Right. And you know, the, what you can make out most is motherfucker, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> And it, it kind of it kind of spoiled it. And it, it, like I used to say, I I always saw New York hardcore tell German hardcore, tell yeah. German because of that. Because I wanted to go to Germany and hear a German hardcore band. Yeah, so yeah. German, and it's singing in, in that in, in that language, that German language, which is aggressive to begin with. Yeah, and yeah. to hear that, and yeah, and then they, they had the punk bands and stuff like that, like Slime and stuff like that, and uh, they would do stuff like that. And then there were other bands like Troopers. From over there, they were actually saying in German, and it just sounds hard. It sounds yeah. hard. I don't know what the hell they're saying, but I like it. But it's hard. Know? Yeah, yeah. It sounds hard. Rather than like, you know, it's not like, would you stop cursing at me? Well, <laughs> well, 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 you know, uh, you know, as somebody who certainly brings it hard vocally yourself, uh, you know, uh, you know, what's been like, and you know, you may not even have one at all, but are you one of these guys that has like, uh, you know? any kind of regime for taking care of your throat? Or are you just a guy that just goes up there and belts it out? No, I, I mean, I, I do what I can. 
I do what I can. Um, I'm, I'm a smoker. Uh, I'm doing the, the vape thing now. So the, the wife that we don't want smoking in the house, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. I buy cigarettes now, a pack of cigarettes. And once I go out drinking, a pack of cigarettes will last me like two weeks. Oh, that's great. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, I got the vape thing, which I use in the house. It's fine. What it gets, does what it does. Um, but on the road, you know, I, 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 I got to try to watch my voice. I'm like, you know, I'm probably doing everything wrong, but I, I learned what's worked for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, 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 a control. I have a uh, shirt like that. There's a, uh, I think it's Jello Voice is the name of it. G E L O Voice, V O I C E. They're, 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 they're lozenges, they're, and they're made for speakers and singers. Uh, they're from uh, they're from Germany, and they can get you can get them on uh, Amazon. Okay. Uh, a, a tour manager in Europe would turn me on to them. I, I always carry those with me, uh, and you know, you, you, you just try to watch what, I mean, what what hurts and what if, it if, if you feel something straining, don't do that. Just take a step yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, you'll breathe. Remember yeah. that you're amplified. I mean, yes, you you want to be heard, but you don't have to be screaming the top of your lungs all the time because right. you are being amplified. Unless you're doing it to emote a certain thing, right? You know? But if you're just chewing up the scenery there, you're gonna be, you know, yeah. hurting by the end of the show. And I, 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 I I'll do the honey. I'll go gargle with honey or whether or hot water. Drinking like a. Sometimes I would, uh, before it depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, I'm trying to, I don't drink every night. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drinker. I, I love, I'm a big bourbon and rye fan. I don't yeah. drink every night. I drink when I want to. Yeah. You know, I, and that's either whether I'm on the road or not. But especially on the road because I got work to do. I can't fucking put it. I, I got like a thing to do. I got to travel. I got to go perform. Yeah. But if I want to have a drink, I will. But you watch me drink. But, but I would, sometimes before a show, I would take a, Couple of hot water, like that you could not not boiling, but like tea water, you know. Tolerable, yeah. Yeah, shot of bourbon in that, or shot of whiskey in that, and sip on that before I go on and breathe in the fuel yeah. as well, and it'll help open me up the steam and also the booze. Yeah, I would drink that. Um, then there's the one thing which I've done a couple of times. Whether this is true or not, I don't know, but I had heard that Luciano Pavarotti. Sometimes we do this. He would take a slice. If you get a good slice of pepperoni, the fattier the better, right? Okay. The greasier the better. Greasy, spicy pepperoni, and suck on it. Suck on a slice, and the, the peppers and the and, and the oils coat your throat. No kidding. And it actually does. It does work. Wow. Well, I mean, I, I mean, you can't knock the results. I mean, a guy like Pavarotti, yeah. fuck. I, mean, I, mean, I heard that's I heard that's what he used to do. Whether or not he did it, I'm not, I never really booked it up, but I've tried it, and it does really work. It works. It, it sounds plausible. Their, I mean, their breath smells like hell. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now you obviously, you, you know, having watched other interviews and like you know having followed the band for all the uh, for all these years, you were certainly known. Uh, you, you know, there's certain guys who I've seen in like the New York Hardcore Chronicles who, you know, people are always pointing at, uh, uh, you know, guys like you, Vinny Stigma, you know, Jimmy Gestapo as these real characters on the scene. Have you ever yourself thought about, you know, you see a lot of these guys go out and do uh, Scott Ian did one from Anthrax. These guys go out and almost do these one man shows where like, you know, it would lend to some of your spoken word slash comedy type stuff. You ever think about doing anything like that? You know, I because did, of your I larger than life personality? I did I, I did I did the spoken word thing for a little bit, very briefly. Okay. I did a couple of a couple of dates. Nothing really I never really went on tour. I did one date in Belgium. They flew me over for one day. I did uh uh Philadelphia, I've done uh, New York Kind of sort of did one in Albany, uh, Montreal. Okay. I okay. I, I just I go up there and I just talk whatever's on my mind. Yeah. Whatever's on my mind, that's that's what comes out of my mouth. Stream never, of conscious, just kind of. Yeah. yeah, I tell my story about how I grew up and whatnot, and how certain things affected me, and what what makes me want to create, what makes me want to do this art, because it is an art. It is art, whether you want to call it art or not. That's what yeah. it is. Sure. And, I, I talk about why, why, what, how this helps me, why I do it, and what, what it led me to do certain things. And that's what I, I would just go up there and just talk. You know? And it was fun. It was fun. I don't know if I would want to do it for uh, as a living or like yeah. or, 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 or tour doing it. 
Right. I don't want it to become rote and love like that. Because I find myself sometimes doing that when I'm on the road anyway. I, I, I talk I talk shit on stage as it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> so sometimes but sometimes I find myself saying the same thing right after that and I, I and I and I hate myself for doing it. But if it if it works, if it's funny, it's funny. You know, yeah. I'm sorry, you right, know? right, I and guess, you have to get it out there. Yeah, exactly. And it's like not, I don't, I'm not really trying to, you know, like the, the press anybody made me say. It, but if, if it's a good joke, I'm using it. I'm yeah. sorry, you know. That's and, and I guess that's why. But I, I I try to do it anyway. But I I have I have musicians backing me up every now and then. You know, yeah. what I mean? I'll go up there, I'll yeah. do my, I'll, I'll I'll talk my shit. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So what? Don't. So, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And then, that's <laughs> That's good for what that is. So now this is probably a loaded question, but I at least got to throw a couple loaded ones in here and at least well, try to well, see if I, you know, to just see if I can get you to squirm and put you on the hot seat a little bit. And I'm sure that obviously, you know, you're going to name a lot of your peers and this might be like a, a slippery slope, but you know, excluding yourself, is there a Mount Rushmore of fucking hardcore and who's up there? Oh boy. As individuals or, or bands? Bands. Yeah. Bands. Oh, Bands, okay. Hmm. Your Mount Rushmore. Okay, my Mount. Yeah, uh, Poison Idea, without a doubt. Okay. Poison Idea. Uh, Discharge. Okay. Uh. Hardcore, hardcore, hardcore. You know. I guess I'd be remiss if I, uh, you know, I'd have to say minor threat. Yeah. They yeah. just, you know, they, they were great live. Yeah. They were great live. They don't drink, live. don't smoke, don't fuck. I mean, that <laughs> whole thing, you know, I mean, I was a straight edge kid when I was 14, 13, 14 for a while, you know. I was going to ask you that on down the yeah. road. I was 13, 14. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, they were a great live band. They did really well. I was Amazing. Five yeah. Five, so they were a great live band. Um, and you know, it, it, I'm sure I, I'm missing some that it's good, but if I'm just gonna boil it down to four, I I I guess I you know, I don't wanna say it because I know everybody like grandmother fucking says it, but bad brains, but only up to rock to light. Rock rock okay. to light. Okay, 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 yeah. And me as somebody that didn't see the bad brains, you know, but, uh, you know, ever alive, you know, like I said, when I was growing up, I was a thrash and metal kid. So, you know, I got into hardcore in my later teens. So I missed the boat on, on a lot of great bands that had to play catch up, man. I, and I'm always intrigued because I just always hear, you know, uh, the bad brains talked about in such glowing terms, man. You know, if you could put a finger on it, what was it that was made them so magical? They were live. They were phenomenal. In their back in their day, in their, in their heyday, early eighties. I the last time I saw them was nineteen eighty five. Yeah, and I'm glad that's the last time I saw them. Yeah, I didn't. I had to see the fucking slippery slope and HR go crazy and people still kissing their ass and. Yeah, I mean the the, the musicianship was there. I'm not gonna ever take that away. They were very talented musician, but it just wasn't there. Like the the the, yeah. the heart and all this. And you know, back in the eighties, I mean, Jesus Christ, eighty two, or whatever. He created what I don't know how many times the Bear Breaks have announced their last shows. Yeah, in the world. Uh, we're breaking up now, only playing reggae. Now, yeah. the last Bear Breaks last shows I went to, yeah, 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 you know? yeah. Well, let's not forget that we are living in the era where we're in the middle of, I think, a uh, a, a, a where are we going on five, six years of this Kiss Farewell tour. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's been a long one, too. Yeah, yeah, Bear Breaks, no, Bear Breaks, I mean, the, 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 the musicianship. I mean, especially if, if you listen to them, like when they first started, like the early stuff, like even like 1980 or whatever, when they were still down in DC and stuff, yeah. and they were more punk. Um, I mean, they were a good band, but they weren't they weren't the most prof like proficient sounding. Right. But then, like, within the next couple of years, they really honed their fucking crap. Yeah. And yeah. found their own little niche. And yeah, early 80s bad brains were untouchable. Yeah. Untouchable. Without, I, I will never take that away from her. I will never deny that. You know, yeah. I you know, I always said I always felt like that nobody would have gave a shit about them until they moved to New York. Only the only reason why I said that is because like nobody really had heard about them until they came to New York. When right. they were down at DC and some people were touring around, they would talk to New York and certain people in New York had heard about them, and maybe you know that area 
and everything. But when they came to New York and they started touring and put out the roar and they put out the roar tape, and people were like, "Whoa, this is something that you know we got to watch out for." And it yeah. and it was, it really was. Yeah. But like I said, I saw them in '85. Last time I saw them, and they played the Rock Hotel on James Street for two shows, um, two nights there, and they were great. And that's how I want to remember them. I didn't want after that. Everybody saw it like kiss the race and with the I guess I record, which I guess is okay, but I didn't really said about it hurt me. I don't know why. They were starting to lose you then a little. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just tired. Everybody like, oh Bay Bridge, Bay Bridge, Bay Bridge. And I was and I was seeing that like that's what the HR guy. I was like, he's just not into it anymore. Which I get. I can understand. Yeah. We don't yeah. really not into it anymore. But then stop, which he yeah. did try a couple of times and they kept sucking him back in. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I just was like, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm moving on. I'll remember them for what they were. And they were, in their day, they were untouchable. Is it tough with, you know, it is it tough doing the genre of music that you do? And I think I've even seen, uh, you know, some of the guys in the Hardcore Chronicles even touched on, uh, you, you know, how much even like they felt sometimes that even CBGBs as a club, you know, uh, you know how much Hardcore really kept the doors open there. You, you know, the matinees and all that stuff, and maybe doesn't get the acknowledgement, uh, you know, uh, from the club itself. But even just in general, do you feel like Hardcore and the message that you guys were spreading back then? You know, do you feel like? And I'm certainly don't want to talk about. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and all that fucking kind of shit or whatever. Yeah. There's certainly no place for you guys there, probably. But I mean, do you feel like that? You know, that genre of music, punk and hardcore, is just you know not it doesn't get its acknowledgement. And like, what should that acknowledgement be? I mean, to an extent, maybe yes. I would I would have to say yes. I mean, we did help keep their doors open, and we did uh, you know people coming to see it. But but there were other shows going on there as well. Yeah, we say that the warrant. Right, right. But yeah. even the bigger picture, though, it doesn't really seem like and 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 you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is probably a bad example because they are so full of shit. I mean, like they're yeah. letting hip hop artists in, you know, before they're letting in iconic fucking, you know, yeah, rock and yeah, yeah. So I don't really put like you know too much emphasis on what they think, but just you know, you're being honored in a traditional way like that, though, it seems like you know, you know the, the genre of music that you do is, is always just kind of disregarded. When it comes to hardcore. It's going to be remembered. It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll exist in one way, shape, or form. It, it, it always will, whether you want it to or not. Yeah. It, and um, uh, do we really need those accolades? No. You know what I mean? I mean, right. if, we, if you get them here and there, you're shocked, you're surprised. If it's something that's going to help you in certain ways or whatever, or beneficial towards whatever the cause may be this week. Right. Fantastic. Right. But I mean, is it really going to, I mean, what, all of a sudden uh, hardcore is going to start playing stadiums and like, you know, like, right. you know which right. has happened here and there. Right. But, you know, is that really what, is, was that the end game? R right. right. Was that the end game? Did it come, to, did it come what we set out to defeat? Right. 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 Is that, is that it? The whole, the whole, whole lot? like, like I was talking, like, man, about um, like in the early eighties or whatnot, into the middle, mid, mid to late eighties or whatever. All these hardcore bands who started out, they were hardcore punk bands or whatever, and they're hardcore bands, and, and they barely play or whatever, and then they they, they learn to play their instruments a little bit better, and then like you know, go to metalheads or whatever, so some of the shows, and then oh, <laughs> they start yeah. playing heavy metal. We're crossover like, now, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they start yeah. playing that. It's like, was that the end game? Just become a metal band the whole time? Yeah, yeah. What happened to this? And like, and like you know, I live. Me and Roger from AF used to live in a garage together. Yeah, in Staten Island. Yeah, and um, no heat, no hot, no water, no bedroom, yeah. no nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it was dead of winter. It was me and him, and like by ten pit bulls. Living in the garage outside. There used to be a, uh, a tire repair center. Yeah. And we lived out there together. And uh, this is when they were doing, um, they put together that, uh, the, the second record, the course for long record. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes he'd bring home stuff and he'd play it. And I'm hearing his mouth stuff. And I'd be like, what What are you doing? What's with all this metal? That? And he's like, you know, well, you know, the metal heads like this now, stuff like that. We're trying to go. I'm like, yeah, the metal heads like it because they never heard this hardcore shit before. Right, right. They don't like it because, like, wow, what if these guys could play metal too? 
Right. You know, I was like, why, why are you doing this? And to this day, I can't say that right. <laughs> but, you know, but, but I guess my point was like you hear like how you you know some of these songs uh, uh, you know you can hear how like uh, uh, a living on a prayer by Bon Jovi could have yeah. an impact on someone's life and change someone's life but then I've also heard how much that Victim in Pain album or how much a Minor Threat album or, or how much this album and that album you know could save someone's life or save somebody to it and I guess it's just more infuriating to think like God damn, you know what I mean? Like it's not as acknowledged as like when you hear you like know, other people make an impact on someone's life. That's that's that you know that, that makes it, 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 it's even more personal because you know it, it's not something you're gonna turn on the radio and hear all the fucking time. It's yeah, like, I mean, I'm sure like when uh when the Stairway to Heaven first came out, there was some guy out there like, honey, this is what we're getting married to next yeah, week. Yeah, right. This is our song. Yeah. And now he or well, not maybe not now. But then throughout the whole fucking seventies and eighties, he yeah. put on some old, the rock station going, Jesus fucking Christ. That yeah. up years ago. <laughs> you know? Yeah, now it's become a, now it's become a constant reminder. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at you. That ain't gonna happen with hardcore. <laughs> and you think nowadays that a band though, and forgive me for not knowing, uh, you know, is sheer terror right now on a label? Right now, no, we're not really uh tied to anyone. Uh, and you feel like a, it's more and you feel like it's more of an advantage now to be a DIY band or like what does a label really do for a band right now at this juncture of, of, you know, of your career? Pays for the pressing of vinyl and get, it deals with all the distribution. Yeah. We feel like ain't got the money or the time or the patience to do that ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so they are still a big role then. Oh, I, I, I think so without a doubt. I mean, you can do it yourself if you have the time and the patience to do it. Yeah. Or, or the space and like, you know. I guess if we were just putting out 45s or stuff like that, I guess I could really do that. But I do not. Uh, but you know, I, I really want to go fucking to the post office or the guy there. But no, I don't. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Don't want to answer emails. No, I don't want. Right. I don't want to. No, and, and I don't have the money to press up this year. But if you really wanted to take a stand back, you can, and, and I think that's fantastic. But I'm not gonna lie. You know, I'm lazy when it goes to that. Like, I'm, sure. I'm, 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 I want somebody to handle the distribution, handle the pressing, and let me do the art part. And all this, here you go, and let's make you know. Let's say, let's try to move, push this thing and do good. So we can go on tour. So the, as long as the records are in the stores and people can buy them, that's all that really matters. I never really expect to fucking make a dime off fucking records or something right. like that. Right. I know that was selling so many copies and shit like that. That's why sometimes you hold on to some of them rare and colored vinyl things. Because later yeah. on, hey, do you sell them on eBay or sell them to some kid on Instagram or something like that? Maybe right. double for yourself. I've done that, and that's 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 nice. But yeah, I don't, I, 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 I can't do it. I, I, I don't have the patience to, to deal with a lot of that stuff. And you know, but it would, you know, you make your money by going on the road and having merch to sell and, and merch people want to buy that's where you get your money yeah we're at the stage for the most part we go out you know these are you know we have we have our guarantees you know some better than others depends on the market depends on where you're playing and that's just the way things are and you know but as long as i'm not losing money as long as i'm not like you know coming home owing money Right, that's that, that part's never good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As long as I'm not losing or owing at the end of the tour, <laughs> we're okay. You know, if we come home with money in our pockets, which we try to come home at least with something, yeah, you know, a little something. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes, it's, wow, we did really well. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and that's got that's the that's the dream right there yeah. to right. be able to and go out and play music for a living, to be able to do this. That's been my dream anyway. Yeah. But like they said, you know, as long as I'm not coming home in debt to anyone or, you know, or, or, or total piss broke, like fucked, then it's, it was a good, it was a good run. And are you somebody who's, uh, and I certainly don't mean this in terms of, you know, uh, you know, me or the fans want you to go anywhere, but are you somebody that's ever thought in, in terms of like a stop date on like when you want to do this, or are you just kind of a, uh, you know, till the wheels fall off, kind of play it by ear in, in terms of music? I'm always going to be doing something with music, whether or not it's Shia Terror or not. I mean, I think Shia Terror, you know, it'll reveal itself to me. Yeah. If, if when, I, when I think uh, this band's done. Yeah, I think it will reveal itself to me. But I'm always going to be doing something with music. 
I, I think about it all the time. Like, you know, well, you know, so, so stuff I wish, you know, I do have the time to do, but it's finding the right people to do it. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I always, I, my latest in my head, what I would love to do is get a band together. Um, I have a, I have a name, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it for this. I don't want to announce it if I ever do to it. But I, w- I want to do, so. I would love to do something more um, in a, Instrument, sort of pseudo instrumentally R and B type of thing. Okay. Not that I'm an instrumentalist by any means, but <laughs> like garage, I'll be like sort of like the Cramps, but more. Um, I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with Titty Shakers. No, but I will get familiar with them now that you dropped look, that to me. Look up Titty Shaker on YouTube. Okay. It was a, it was a style of music like 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 late fifties, sixties, into the sixties. A lot of sax. And allow da, 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 yeah, da, yeah, da, yeah. Music, yeah. They're shaking their Getting the ass is shaking. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. And I would love to do a band like that. Just a fun band like that. Yeah, you know, like maybe a sax player or two, crazy playing that guitar again. Maybe some uh, have a chick yelling in the band or whatever, singing. Yeah, and having a, an actual drummer. But what I would like to get is a cocktail drum set and just like be that kind of right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, kind of like yeah. That, you know, leading the band, but like yelling every now and then, hey! Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what's in my, that's what's causing my mind. That might be, that might be the way to go out. <laughs> All right, like something you could see like up on the stage at like a Copacabana. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like that, that would, you know, it's exactly. Like Copacabana or, or something like Hotel Lounge, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. With a bunch of fucking nerds and fucking, you know, playing suits and hoarding glasses, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that, so that, what is that, the- that might be the way to go. So what is the plan now? You talked about, uh, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, and I certainly could get beat up in the comment section if I had John here and didn't ask. Uh, what is the plan, though, for sheer terror? You said you want to get a nucleus of guys. You want to get more relevant. You want to get a little more active art ever. So do you have a timeline on, on, on when we could expect any new music from sheer terror? Well, we're always fucking around here and there. Nothing, nothing solid right now. What we got, we got Europe coming up throughout the month of July. And then we don't, uh, August, I think we're pretty much not doing anything. Uh, August, I think we'll, it will probably be jamming with the new, uh, we're practicing more with the new, the new bass player. Okay. We, got, uh, uh, we have a show or two in September. We might have an easy, uh, we might have a West Coast run in September. I'm not sure yet. Uh, and then after that, pretty much, we're going to take at least the month or whatever, or, or uh, whatever it takes to work on the new material, put out a new release. At this stage of the game, if I get eight, nine songs and call it a mini LP or whatever, yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't, you don't have to, I mean, if I had 14 songs, fantastic. You know what I mean? Put them out or put out 12, 32 for 70, whatever, great. But you know what? You're never going to be playing all these fucking songs anyway. Right. I had to try, they ain't going to let me listen. You know, it, 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 kids with hardcore and stuff like that. How many records I put out so far? All this is the fucking first album anyway. These old bastards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. They like what they like. They want to sing what they want to sing into the exactly. microphone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking bust my fucking bulls coming up with fucking fifty two minutes worth of music. So this yeah. little son of a bitch only was there the first three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So if I come up with eight solid fucking songs, not or eight nine solid, boom. This is this. This is the new record. I'm yeah. very happy with that. Yeah. Because it is tough right now, right? You got to feel like you kind of got to have them in, you know, you've only got them in the palm of your hand for so long before they're it's moving on to the next working. fucking thing. It's yeah. got to be worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm not one to just put out products for the sake of putting out product. I got to be proud of it. I got to like it. It's me. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whether I want to, I mean, as it's, it's, it's goofy as that sounds, sometimes yeah. or whatever, it's a piece of me right there. This is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. I, I, I want it to be good. Right. Whether or not they like it out there, well, is yet to be seen. But right. I'm happy with it. And As a guy who spent so much time on the stage yourself, you know, and obviously this is a completely different genre, but what do you think as a live performer with the honesty and the, uh, you know, of hardcore and, and, and how much that shines through and that give and take with the band in the audience, what do you think of when you see a band like, uh, you know, even though they've reached legendary status and I mentioned them earlier, when you see a band like Kiss at this stage of their career and they're getting on stage and they're using these backing tracks and smoke and mirrors and shit like that, do you like to go see the live? thing and see it warts and all so to speak or should kiss be doing that and trying to get people the best show possible 
Huh. I, I guess it depends on the music, really, or the genre of the music. I mean, I'd rather have it live and in your face like that. Yeah. yeah. But like certain things, I mean, I mean, kid, I was I was a big kid fan when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, the early seventies, something like that, in the mid seventies. Punk thing happened, and uh, Sid Vicious killed his girlfriend. What is it like, 1979 or whatever yep. it was, 1980 or whatever? Like around that time, I was trying to get into punk. Kiss just didn't stand a chance. I was yeah. five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And no, no disrespect to that, but whatever. It's what well, I guess. Whatever works. It's hard for me to say because I don't really go out a lot to see big concerts. I yeah. never really did. I was never a big concert guy. I wanted to go see some and stuff like that, but there was nobody ever really wanted to take me away like that. So when the punk thing started happening, the hardcore thing started happening, I was old enough to like sneak out of the house or yeah. stuff like that. And I would go yeah. to certain places I really had no business being. Yeah. But those were really the first shows I went to. I was never really like, you know, oh, I'm going. I mean, I wish I'd seen Black Sabbath, you know, right. back in the day. I wish I'd seen stuff like that. But I, I didn't. I can do so, but like it, it's like okay, I'm sure they had tons of backing tracks or whatever, but, but like I, I'm, I'm, I'm like you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a metal guy by no means. I'm very picky when it comes to heavy metal and stuff like that. What I like, yeah, I like a lot of the new wave of British heavy metal stuff, I like, I like the more rock and roll, yeah, metal, you, know? you know what I mean, yes, metal, metal, stuff like that. Everybody did nothing for me. Man of War, I think are hilarious, and I, you know, I get yeah. like, I laugh my ass. So, but yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I can appreciate it, but it, it, it's 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 ridiculous. That's why yeah. it's funny, You're right? I, you know, stuff like that. But I, I love like, like like Tank and um Bardis, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I go like really shit like that. I just love like more rock and roll stuff. But you know, Motorhead, but Motor a rock and roll band. Anybody ever calls them metal band always makes you mad. Yeah, rock and roll. Yeah. I but agree. I saw this was about I don't know seven eight years ago, whatever the hell it was in New York. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend at the time we got uh, we got in the guy got us on the list and uh, things. We went sort of that that uh, baby metal. Yes, the Japanese girls. Yes, yeah. That was one of the most entertaining shows I'd ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. I got a kick out of that. Yeah, they got real popular. Them. Yeah, like they really, really, really became hot shit for a while there. Yeah, yeah they just and they went down to a two piece. The one girl left. Now they got another third girl. Now they got this whole. I mean, if you try to read the history of the band, it, 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 it was like a comic book. Like it's just this whole mystery thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's funny, but I got a kick out of it. I saw that. I, I thought they were. I thought that was entertaining as shit. Yeah, I thought it was a lot of back and tracks and stuff like that going on with that, but. I was entertained. I yeah. really well, it's hard to go see these big arena tours now anyway, though. Like, when you got guys out there like Bruce Springsteen who want fucking $500 for a fucking seat, you know what I mean? Well, like, well, that's another thing. It's like, you know, when it comes to, like, the larger bands, stuff like that, uh, if you're paying this money to go see them, you damn well better be entertained. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're paying all their money. But what also pisses me off personally is when I go on uh, Facebook or whatever with my fucking my friends, a bunch of jerks, uh, you know, it's like, well, like you look, you get them to leave their fucking house. You know, like, hey, I'm coming through town, I'm playing the show. Oh, I got the wife and kids. Oh, I'm blaming yeah. the kids because they suck. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. It's, it's yep. the kids' fault. Yeah, yep. okay, whatever. Kids want you out of the house, back, so get out of there. Yeah, yep. Okay? yep. So they were like, you know, oh, I can't. Blah, blah, blah. And then you see it two weeks later. Iron Maiden's coming to town. Take yeah. all my money. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the VIP experience. I'm going to pay you know ten thousand dollars to go backstage. Exactly. And... <laughs> Uncle Paulie comes to town. Oh, I don't have time. Yeah. Dick. How about yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> and, this is <laughs> and I want to get back to uh, you know, I want to get back to you touched on it a little bit early in, in the interview. Is there any more you can tell people uh about uh the book that you're working on right now? You said it was part memoir, part uh, you know It's more uh stories. Okay. I'm trying to put it together now stuff that I already have written, stuff that I, I have to get out of my head and whatnot. Uh part, some of it's um I mean they're all based on a uh, truth, like either mine or someone else's. Or yeah. some, you know, uh, you know, something like I came up with from something that I heard. Yeah. It's, it's not a fantasy novel, so to speak. 
But it's not an autobiography because the last thing we need right now is another fucking autobiography. Yeah, Look everybody's How right bad now. it was back in the day and how we lived in squats. I never lived in a squat. Yeah. I had a very loving family. We were piss poor working class, but we cared about each other. And my mother was a great cook. And I always had a roof over my head. Yeah. We may not have had a lot, but we had love. So I can't, I, I'm not going to put out this book like, why, 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 I feel sorry for me. And all yeah. this shit. No. Whatever stupid shit happened in my life was because of my own fucking decisions. Your own doing, yeah. I'm not blaming nobody but me. That's yeah. All I ever fucking blame. My parents did the best they could, and they wanted the best for me and whatever they could do for me. But they they, they were very understanding and very open. They let me go out and learn for myself. Yeah. And, I, and did I fuck up? You're damn right I did. Y yeah. <laughs> I Part of the process. Of Part of the process. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Did I grow up hard and have... I grew up depressed because most of everybody hated me in school. And thanks to punk, thanks to punk rock and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. The, their parents wanted to fight me, yeah. and you know, here and there, you had to put up your dukes and you had to do what you had to do. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't have a tough life. Whereas, and I was starving to death or anything like that. Right. But you know, I, I went out and I did stupid shit as as a, te a teenager is wont to do. Right. You know, you go out and you fuck up and yeah. you try not to go to jail. Yeah. Right. <laughs> try not to get try not to die. Try not to go to jail. Or you get the rock biography where it's just the stories about doing uh, you know doing cocaine off of a stripper's ass. You know, you gotta hear all the which tales I've of debauchery. Do, yeah. Which I've yet to fucking do. <laughs> you know, the tales of debauchery that you have to hear from these bands, you know. Exactly. This, you I've know, done cocaine over you know, I've done cocaine over a lot of things and never off a stripper's ass. Never a hooker's ass yet. I'm 55 years old now. I'm getting married in October. My chances are slim and none. Now. <laughs> they really are. They really are. They really are. And 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 usually I save this question. It's usually one of the tougher ones. It really gets people squirming. But your desert island pick. If I'm dropping Paul Bear on a desert island and you're only taking one album. And Paul, none of this fucking bullshit cheating. No compilations. No greatest yeah. hits. An album. One and you're album. Gonna and you're gonna live with this fucking thing. You know what I mean? For until you die on this fucking island. This has got to be the music you want on a daily basis. One album. Ooh, that's hard. One album. Mm. Yeah, this usually winds up being the one. And, and 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 you know, while you're rolling around in your head, I think what usually winds up being the problem here, and I've discussed this with you know with, with my guests, and I don't even know if I have a definitive answer. I feel like if you're on an island, man, you, do, you know, the emotions, you know, especially for guys like us, you know, who do get on our own heads and have anxiety. I don't know if I'd want something just heavy or just soft all the time. Yeah. You know I mean? You know, it's kind of got to ebb yeah. and flow and it, it take me through all the things that I need to feel. So I couldn't just say, geez, as much as I love victim of pain, I'd want to hear that every fucking day, you know I mean, on an island. But then I also wouldn't want to hear, like, you know, a bunch of love songs every fucking day on an island either, though, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. All right. I, I was going to say Hunky Dory by David Bowie. Okay. I was going to say that. Okay. Which uh, I, I might have to sneak that on the record somehow. <laughs> but uh, I, I um, where I'm bound, where oh, wow, where I'm bound by Dion. By Dion, okay, okay. It's it, when he started to go like towards the blues and songwriter type of uh, period in his life, and it's um, it's it's got a lot of like. Sappy type of songs, like love type songs, but it's also got a couple like a doo-woppy type songs because a bluesy type shit on it. Yeah. And it's just a really good record, I think so. Anyway, I, I like that record a lot. And for the only unfortunate thing about that record is it suffers from uh 60s production or, or early 60s production, whether late, late 50s production, or, yeah. or any of the production where they when the record company was given a record, all right, here's the song, here's the record I recorded, it. boom, here you go, thing, and then they're like, all right, great. Put some strings and horns on this right away. And they get back to record. There's a string section and all that. And the guy's like, I yeah. didn't fucking record that. And yeah, that, ruined it. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes it helps, actually. And sometimes it's like, a lot of guys got pissed off. A lot of guys, they got, they got, they got I would think it. so, yeah. And they're like, what the hell is this? I didn't record this record. It's not my song. Where are yeah. these strings coming from? And like, but it's but it, it, that's all you, you've ever known it. You never know. Then, then if you hear the original recording, sometimes you're like, Mm, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 yeah, Dion, where I'm bound. 
A definitive answer, man, from a definitive guy, man. Listen, Paul Bear, I could sit here and talk to you all goddamn night and listen to you regale me with stories, man. It's been an honor getting a chance to chop it up with you, man. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we can keep in touch and we can get on here and do it again sometime on down the road. Said, this, uh, this was definitely fun. I do appreciate yeah. it, Mom. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, safe travels out there on the road, buddy. Thanks a lot, pal. You take care. All right. Take it easy, brother. Thank you. Now we'll watch Paul Bear try to disconnect from this phone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a red oh, button. Uh, I think there's a red oh, button. Yeah, that's it. Cool. yeah, there you go. All right, take care. <laughs> take it easy, brother. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, a fucking legend, and you're welcome. That is the iconic Paul Bear, lead singer of New York hardcore fucking legends, sheer terror. And that's what they are on stage, man. A fucking ferocious New York hardcore band. Uh, rivaled by nobody. He is an iconic front man. The great Paul Bearer. Uh, you know, if you don't know Sheer Terror, you're getting your hardcore fucking card pulled. And I've pulled cards before on people, man. Sheer Terror, always Rex Ruger approved. Paul Bearer as a front man, definitely approved. Uh, the man is an icon and uh, uh, an endless source of material stories jokes entertainment years and years of it so thank you so much paul bear for coming on here and doing that that was a hell of a lot of fun chopping it up with him and of course go out and check out what sheer terror is doing go back and check out shit that they have done they are fucking legends in, of the hardcore scene man give them their flowers put some respect on that band's name enough said about that i hope you guys enjoyed that as much as i enjoyed chopping it up with the great Paul Bear. And remember, kids, until we get together and do this thing again, remember to take it easy and keep it sleazy.